Many patients quickly understand that taking medicines is important for them to have seizure control. Sometimes they're a little slower to realise the importance of other lifestyle issues that will help them maintain good health. Of these, sleep is, I think, the most important. Regular, adequate sleep protects the brain from seizures. In patients who unfortunately suffer recurrent seizures during their adult life, about 60% will look back and recognise that their seizures often occurred at times that they've missed sleep. Sometimes missing sleep is for the best of reasons, a social engagement that goes into the early hours of the morning. Other times it occurs because of illness, disturbing sleep or stress or worries. But in each of these situations, the potential is that in the following days, the patients will experience seizures that otherwise needn't to have occurred. How this is best managed varies from person to person. In the young teenager and young adult, socially related sleep disturbance is often the biggest problem that I encounter. In this situation, the first place to start is to recognise that it can create a problem they don't need to suffer unnecessarily. The second is that they do not have to be in bed at 10 o'clock every night, is that it is possible to stay up later at night, but to do so means that they either are allowed to sleep in adequately the next morning or the night before going out that they have an afternoon nap to ensure an adequate amount of sleep for a 24 hour period. I've warned them that occasionally I'll encounter patients who have had a terrific night out to 1 or 2 in the morning and then decide to join their friends at 6am to go surfing which is so popular in our area only to have a convulsion an hour later from the combination of an early start and sleep deprivation. For older patients, increasingly it's become apparent that sleep disturbance might relate to the condition sleep apnea. This is a condition usually associated with heavy, prolonged, regular snoring at night, interrupted by occasional periods of breath holding. Neurologists are now aware of the importance of this condition in a number of illnesses affect the brain, but none more so than patients with epilepsy so routinely it's important to inquire of this. Insomnia occurs for other reasons as well and in many adults these relate to external stresses of life whether they're financial or social or emotional. As best I can I try and keep track of this with my individual patients and remind them of the needs to avoid missing sleep. As I explain to them it will make their current problems worse if on top of their worries, a convulsion occurs with all the impacts it might have on their life.